going on guys? Alright, so we're, today I'm doing a uh, sour beer tasting of a sour beer that I brewed um, 15 months ago. So it's, um, it was a 10 gallon batch and so what this beer was, it was a pretty simple recipe as far as I remember. Yeah, it looks like mostly Pilsner, some two rows, some wheat, pretty heavy on the wheat, and a little bit of acid malt. Fucking cat. Get out of here, I'm cammed up. Go on. Get. Get. So, uh, pretty simple, just plain recipe. Um, what I did on this beer, so it was a 10 gallon recipe, or 10 gallon batch. So half of it was pitched with um, a Rosalaire blend, and that was it. So just one packet of Rosalaire. And then the other one was pitched with dregs of a Cricket Stave beer that they have not re-released. But it is, um, this beer right here is probably over two and a half years old, two years. It was when Cricket State first opened up, um, so whenever that was. They were probably only a couple months old and they released this one, but uh, yeah, it's Oculus. And so this is my last bottle. It's one of my most prized sour beers, actually. But, um, so that one was just like a, you know, a half gallon um, DME with that dregs in it. And that probably went for f five to six months-ish, I don't even remember. Um, and then I pitched that into the other five gallons. So that's the, uh, so those are the two beers here. And so I pulled samples of both the beers, took gravity readings, and I don't have a pH meter, but I will be getting one um, at some point soon. So one of the things that I found on these beers is Totally different fermentations, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, so the gravity is still relatively pretty high on these beers, which I'm kind of surprised on. Um, the Oculus version, I had taken a sample um, six months ago, and it was doing pretty good, I thought. Um, the Rosalaire blend, I have not opened the fermenter on it until now. So why don't I start out with the Oculus version, which is this one. Um, so this one is still at 1010. Um, and it's got to be really close. I'm actually calibrating my... Calib oh, you fucker. Boy, you're getting me back for all the videos. You haven't bombed me lately. And I'm not editing this out. So my hydrometer seems to be pretty accurate. I've got some water in here. And it's reading 1002. So it might be a little cold or hot. I don't know what throws off your hydrometer. So I'm going to assume that my, hydro that my hydrometer is accurate. But anyway, so the Oculus version is at 1010. The um, Rosalaire version is still at uh, 1012, which for a sour beer seems pretty darn high. Oh, you know what? I did take a I did take samples of both of these beers before. This is good. This is why you keep notes. And I almost don't very good, but I did on the, these sour beers. So let's see. So I brewed them in September of 13. So the Rosalaire was at 1016 a month after I brewed it. And I racked it into a secondary, mildly sour, lacto sour, tasted. And then I tasted the Dregs version, which is the Oculus version, um, December of 2013 so exactly a year ago and it was at 1.012 and I say very tart almost a slimy da, da, da. and then I okay so I pulled a sample in June of 2014 of the Rosalaire version so that would have been about seven eight months ago and it's at 10.12 so that's good um, and I say very mild on tart and sour almost a burn flavor not impressed that's funny. I didn't even read my old notes before. I have tasted both of these. I'm so glad I took notes. <laughs> I'm so happy about that, actually. So so basically what that tells me is that uh, the Rosalar version has not come down in gravity at all in seven or eight months. So I am not afraid of this beer um, continuing to drop in gravity much. I mean, it's always possible that it could drop maybe a point or two, which typically sour beers you always hear, I mean, I'm kind of just wrapping up my first kind of wave of sour beers that I've brewed, 
So this is all kind of new to me as far as first-hand knowledge, but I've read a lot. And a lot of them, you know, can finish all the way out to 10, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, I haven't really heard of a whole lot finishing above 10, 10. Most of them are like 10, 06, 10, 04, 10, 08 is kind of like the safe range-ish. So, so the 10, 12 scared me before I actually looked at my notes. Um, so that's good. It's, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. It's, that's where it's finished out. So let's start with the Rosalaire version. Um, again, fairly it's pale beer. There's nothing else in there. There's some acidulated malt, wheat, 15% wheat, 23% two-row, 57% Pilsner. Um, one thing I will say is my brewing technique as far as water chemistry and stuff like that has gotten a lot better in the past year and a half. Um, I'm making better clean beers for sure. So, um, I mean, I wasn't making complete shit before, but my water is hard anyways. So let's give this Rosalaire um, a taste. I have just tasted it briefly real quick. I haven't really thought about it too much, but one of the things that on this note is interesting. So it smells pleasant. It smells mildly tart. Um, there's a little bit of funky in there, a little bit of kind of Brett notes, but some slight lactic character. It smells smells good. Um, no complaints really on the smell, nothing off-putting. You can smell some of the malt in there still too, which is maybe different. Maybe I wouldn't have picked that up if I didn't know the gravity was so high. Okay, let's go ahead and give it. So off from the nose, I don't pick up anything that would be alarming at all. No normal vinegar notes or anything like that. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most sour thing in the world, 1 being water. Hmm. I would rate this at like a four. I mean, like if you were to give me this beer and say, hey, try my clean beer, try my blonde or something like that, and I tried this and I'd be like, mm, I think you might have picked up a little bit of fucking funk somewhere in the middle, you know, somewhere along your brewing process, you got a little bit of an infection. It kind of tastes like that. Um, the burnt flavor that I, that I acknowledge, that I've said, on my notes that was from June, so six, seven months ago. So six, seven months ago I said very mild on tart and sour, almost a burn flavor, not impressed. Um, I think I'm still going with those notes. Um, maybe not, fucking cat, get out of here, go on, get. Get, hey, get, come on. You're lucky I don't beat you, cat. Get, hold on. So I think I'm going to still stick with that description. The burnt, I think, has gone down um, based upon my my notes there. Now, I'm not sure what would cause, a, like, a burnt kind of smoky flavor. Um, I know that it's... Uh, I know that it's some sort of a, an off flavor in a clean beer. And a slight vinegar note to it too. Um, not super impressed with this one. Um, like I, I tasted a sample of uh, my East Coast East uh, Bug Country 20 that was... Uh, I've got kind of like a Solera of that kind of going. And that one was tasting good. It was tasting right on. Maybe not as sour as I'd want, but it was a super clean tasting, lactic, Brett, bready, or Brett, you know, kind of flavors in there. This one is not tasting as good. Um, I'm not sure why. So that's the Rosalaire version. So I've either got a couple, couple different options on here. Um, one, just let it sit there, which... I'm super lazy, so that's a definite possibility. 
Um, I don't think adding fruit to a beer that's not great is going to help it that much. Maybe it could mask a little bit of it. Um, I would add fruit. If I was going to, if I had to keg this, I would add fruit for another three months and then keg it and see what happened. I don't think it would make it worse, but I don't think it would make it that much better. I could, I don't know. I mean, time is probably going to be my best bet, and it's probably what's going to happen since um, I've got quite a bit of sour beer that's coming up on over a year, year and a half old, so I'm not in... So I'm about to be swimming in sour beer. I've got about 30 gallons that, that are about that's about to become matured, quote unquote, or is already matured. Yeah, man, it's just not pleasant. It's not bad. Um, part of me, I'm gonna save the rest and put that in the fridge. Maybe just the warmth of it. If that changes at all in the fridge, I'll I'll put an update. But if if it just tastes the same and but cold, I'll go with that. So, um, yeah, so on a scale of 1 to 10 on the sour lactic tartness, I would put this at a 4. Um, if you guys have ever had a lawfully, I would put like a lawfully at like a 7 or an 8. And this, actually, you know what? I'm going to take this down to a 2 or 3 on kind of like the sour lactic notes. I mean, it's, again, repeating myself, it's almost like a bad homebrew that someone gave you that's supposed to be clean but it's not and you can taste I mean it's not so far sour that you're like oh this you know this is actually pretty good like um, Laramo 22's um, sour brown went so sour that it was kind of like oh well I think this could have been on purpose it wasn't but it was kind of one of those type of things so this one tastes like a beer that like you need to change out your plastic gear and uh, start over Yeah, definitely some mouthfeel in there too. I wouldn't guess that the that the that the final gravity was ten twelve though. Which I am confident. It's been there for at least six months, so that's not changing. So let's try the Oculus beer. Now I had tried a little bit of a sample on this. Um, again, same exact mash. I mean it's just a ten gallon batch split in half. So now here's a funny thing. This one smelled great. Um this one smells really good. This one, and again, this one, you know, this one was a Rosalaire, so it had all the Saccharomyces, Britannomyces, PDO, and, and Lactobacillus. This one was only from one or two bottles of dregs, pitched into a half-gallon starter wort. Let I let that go for like six months, and then I pitched that entire thing into five gallons. So. If there was Saccharomyces in there, who knows? There might not be any alive. There might it might only be Brett. And it's hard to tell. So on the nose, I get a little bit of that diaper thing, you know, kind of not super bad. It's just not a pleasant smelling beer. When I swirl it around and kind of get some. You get more of that classic lactic and a little bit of funky stuff. I mean, it's not a bad smelling beer. It's not great. It's not what I would really like as far as smell goes. It just kind of has like a... It, the word sounds worse than it smells, but like a pukey smell. Um, But it does have a nice lactic um, bite to it as well. Um, not a so let's give it a taste. This one is super sour. On a scale of one to ten, this one's like a fucking nine. And I've drinking a lot of sour beers, so to say that this thing is almost overly sour, is saying a lot. It tastes exactly like a wart head. Like those sour wart heads. Like it's that level of sourness and just. Yeah. It almost makes my eyes water. That's crazy. Um, and this one was a, an extremely sour beer as well. Um, maybe not as sour. I'm afraid to open this to try it side by side. Since it's my last sour, I should stop being a little bitch and just. When this thing is ready. 
I will do a side by side. But until then, but um, so this thing tastes good. This is like a beer that I might actually try to blend down. It's that intense. I mean, it's got so much lactic sourness. I mean, this one really, really gets you. Um, I'm happy with it because all the... There's no, there's none of that burnt type of flavor in there. It's just so sour. I mean, you can feel it like taking the enamel off your teeth. Well, I wish I had a pH meter. This thing would be like rock low. So, um, yeah, it's cool to see what, how completely different the same exact beer is, um, and just different methods that has happened. Um, I'm going to take a guess that this one is so much more sour because there was not, there was no Saccharomyces, normal ale yeast when it was pitched in. So if I was, so I would definitely be using the dregs. Now this, this beer is still sitting on the yeast cake. So whatever I decide to do with this beer, when I pull it off the yeast cake, I'll definitely reuse the yeast cake. And I'll probably pitch an ale yeast with it. I just, I couldn't, I do, you don't want this beer to get any more sour. I mean, it's almost obnoxiously sour. Wow. It's almost so sour. And it's not a vinegar sour either, which is really off-putting. And I know what those taste like. I've had some really bad Flanders commercial examples of Flanders Red, where it's like drinking vinegar. That doesn't have this in here, but it's definitely just fucking lactically sour. Anyways, so I'll have to see. Um, now, both these beers have, their gravity has been stable for a while, according to my notes. Um, yeah, so I had this, this Oculus, I had it at 10.10, maybe 10.11. I mean, it was real close in between the 10 and the, and the 12. And on a year ago, almost exactly, actually exactly one year ago, this beer was at 10, 12. So this beer isn't going anywhere either. Um, and a year ago, it was, I had notes of very, very tart and almost a slimy. So I do remember it was kind of like a slimy thing. Gosh, I'm rambling like crazy on this video. So anyway, so yeah, we'll have to see what I want to do with this beer. Um, I could, s I can't see myself just bottling up uh, the Oculus version on its own. And it's kind of one of those things. Do you do you blend the two back together? Um, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do a little blending. So there's some. I'll try to just kind of do half and half. Let's give or take about it. Okay, so it smells great. Hmm. It kind of took the best of both worlds. Fuck, I might just have to blend these two things together 50 50. Um, it's a much more pleasant beer than each on its own. That's a fact. That's straight up the truth. This one is not sour. The Rosalaire is not sour. This one's too sour. This one has kind of a burnt flavor. Um, by blending them together, the burnt flavor is definitely less to the fact that if I didn't tell you to search for kind of like a like an earthy burnt kind of flavor, you might not pick it up. The sourness is like a six or a seven. 
right where I kind of like my sour beers. And there's a lot of... I don't know if funk is the right word for it. I'd love to do like a tasting with someone that really knows what the fuck they're doing. Um, of like a bunch of beers and have someone that's, I mean, really on top of their sour game and be like, oh, can you taste the... You know, this one's more lactic, and this one's more pedial forward, and this one's, you know, has a lot of funky stuff. Um, I'd like to get kind of coached up on stuff, because I'm kind of just, uh, shaking my dick in the dark here. So, I've settled it. I, I, think, I, I think tomorrow I could blend both these beers together. You know, keg one version, bottle the other, which is what I might do, because I don't have 10 gallons. It might not be a bad idea. What do you think, Harrison? Monster, monster cat. So, yeah, very cool. I'm going to. I wish I pulled more samples. Okay, I've got some still in there. I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm going to do that again. Let's see here. Do a little bit more heavy on the. A little bit more heavy on the Oculus version. Yeah, much better beer. All right. So that is my uh, sour beer tasting session. So I um, could be more happy with the two beers. Uh, I think some of my other beers are definitely more on track to being better beers. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'll definitely reuse the cakes on both of those beers to make more sour beer. Because I have a bunch of carboys, I just don't have a whole lot of time anymore for brewing. So I am going to be brewing very soon. I have some Brettois. I have two starters of some Brettois going um, on stir plates. And I'm going to be doing, I've got a gigabyte fast souring lactobacillus pouch. So I'm thinking about doing like a quick sour, like it's not going to be a true Berliner Weissen, but I think what I'll end up doing is doing um, 10 gallon batch. Um, low, low IBU uh, batch of beer. I'll do um, half just the Brettois, so it'll be a real low IBU Brett Brettois beer, and hopefully that will. I found that the Brettois, um, a couple months into the bottle, really gets funky, really gets Brett forward, and so I'm just gonna see what that beer does. All my Brett beers so far have been really hop forward Brett beers. And so I kind of wanted to see what a Brett Trois in low IBU setting does. And then the other five gallons with the lactobacillus, I'm going to do like a 100 degree fermentation until that one gets tarted up. And then I will pitch the other starter of the Brett Trois in that one. I may or may not keg that one, uh, but that one will probably be a couple months out as far as bottling or kegging goes. So, so that's my next brew day. Um, I should brew a, a clean beer, but I'm not. I've got this a lactobacillus sitting in the fridge, so I gotta, gotta use it. But anyways, guys, I, this video went on for fucking ever, so if you guys watched the end of it, thanks, or I guess uh, shame on you for sitting and watching all this. So anyways, guys, um, thanks. See ya.